I am one of the Christian protesters outside General Conference, and this is why we're out here. If you're not familiar with what General Conference is, twice a year, the first week in April and in October, the entire LDS church comes together to hear from their modern day apostles and prophets. And it's a really big deal. If you've ever been down here, uh, it's really busy. There's lots of people running around and there are a lot of protesters, or at least what Latter-day Saints call protesters. Some people hold signs, some people try to hand out materials. There's a lot going on, and today I wanted to give you a little bit of a snapshot of who these so-called protesters are, why we're out here, and what we're doing. Um, well, they, they, believe, they believe that what they have is true, but like, nobody can really answer the question, where will they go? Will they for sure go to heaven? And I feel like there's always something added to that, that Jesus isn't enough. And I just want them to know that we're never gonna be good enough, but Jesus is enough. I love the LDS people. I love the people that show up to General Conference. Um, and because I love them, I want them to know the truth, know who God is, and uh, know how they can be made right with Him. And if you wanna know why we come out here, it really boils down to the fact that we don't believe that Latter-day Saints have eternal life. That might be really shocking for people to hear, but we really don't. We believe that because some of the beliefs are so different uh, from what's taught in the Bible, we, we don't think that they're saved. And so in order for people to have eternal life, they must know the claims of the gospel. So one of the things that we try and do is interact with Latter-day Saints and help them understand what some of the major differences are between what the LDS Church teaches and what Christianity teaches, and what the Bible teaches. Well, it's not to freeze my hands off. Um, it, is, it is to uh, share the truth of uh, the gospel. Um, the biblical gospel. My source of spiritual truth is the Bible, and the Bible actually it mocks the idea of there being other gospels. In Galatians, it, uh, it says, if anyone's gonna lead you to a different gospel, not that there is another one. And sadly, the, the gospel of Joseph Smith, it actually isn't good news. The gospel means good news, and it's not. It's not good news. It's actually a very hopeless, hopeless news. The, the news that's in the Bible is truly good because we as sinners can actually be forgiven of our sins and it's nothing that we've done it's a free gift of God even if you disagree with me about uh, beliefs and doctrines can you at least understand why we're doing this I mean if you thought we were destined for eternal damnation would you not want to let me know? I, I often, we're often by street corners, so I'll say if someone was in the middle of the street and a truck was coming and the person didn't know, do I not have a kind of moral obligation to tell them that the truck is coming? I think I do, and that's kind of what we think about Latter-day Saints. The, the truck of God's divine wrath is headed for them. And apart from the grace and mercy of God, God shown through the Lord Jesus Christ, they will not be saved. And so no, we can't leave them alone. You know what, the most, the meanest thing you could do if you were wanting to get back at the Mormon people is not be out here at all. Just let them go to hell and not have anybody try to speak truth in their life. That would be the meanest thing. It'd be like letting somebody walk through the day with something green in their teeth and not say anything because you're scared to rock the boat. For the same reason that a good doctor <laughs> who knows that his patient has cancer wouldn't say, hey, you're fine. It's cruel to tell somebody that they're okay when you know that they're not okay. I want them to be able to know that there's somebody out here who cares for them, and I'm one of, as you mentioned, many people who want to share their faith. Another thing that everyone wants to know is why are we here? Why are we at conference? There are 21,000 people who are going to be crammed into this building right here. That's a lot of people. And we want to go where people are. Uh, why do you do this here at conference specifically? At conference, it's because it's the biggest congregation of people. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna go to where there's no people. Um, and because there's a lot of people here, there's a lot of opportunity. Well, uh, 
we come out here mainly because we want to be able to share the gospel with our Mormon friends. Uh, and we want to do it in a way that is respectful and loving. And so naturally, uh, we, we take whatever opportunities are available to do that. And so, you know, they have this conference twice a year and thousands and thousands of people go there. So we're like, well, why don't we go and, and take the opportunity to go where the Mormons are and, and share the gospel with them. You know, I do think it's ironic that uh, people always call us protesters because if you don't know very much about um, you know, Christian church history, one of the biggest events was something called the Reformation. And in the Reformation, the Protestants broke off from the Roman Catholic Church. The Protestants were called Protestants because they protested the Roman Catholic Church. So we never call ourselves pro protesters. We call ourselves evangelists or things like that. But I do think it's, it's kind of a uh, historically ironic term because we are Protestant. We do protest a doctrine that is not true and is false. So this is actually my first time coming down to conference necessarily, uh, just a place to hopefully find people who are willing to have conversations, not to offend people personally, but to just m maybe make a stance against uh, specifically this false doctrine of Mormonism. Do you think it's disrespectful to do something like this? I would be more than happy if a group of Mormons came to my church and stood outside and would engage in conversation with me. Um, do I think there's a way that something like this can be done that is disrespectful? Well, sure. Um, but no, I don't, I don't think that what I'm doing is disrespectful. I'm only doing this out of love. I truly do love these people and I want them to be in right relationship with Christ. Um, if someone feels disrespected by it, I, so I don't know what to tell you. I'm not sorry for it because I'm, I'm out here trying to give, like I said, good news to people. So. Um, I, I've seen people that can be disrespectful out here, but that's not my intention. Like, I literally want to be Christ. I want to show the love of Christ to other people. No, we all know we're all going to come out here, and uh, and so we just show up. We all seem to have our favorite places. Where I'm standing right here, right across the street, is my favorite place to be. Uh, and we all know each other, so when we have breaks, we go over to City Creek and we have lunch together, and yet we haven't really communicated with one another to say, well, what time are you coming? We just know what time the conference times are, and we, we come and we, we, we each have our own strategy. That's the beautiful thing. I'm the only one doing the miracle of forgiveness. Other people are handing out gospel tracts. Other people are doing surveys. Everybody has their own tactic, and I think that's wonderful. Some people say, why can't you do that elsewhere? And we do that elsewhere. <laughs> it's not like conference is the only time we ever come out ever. I know people who go door to door. Sometimes we stand outside BYU or temples, or sometimes we interact with people who come into our churches, or I don't know, we just talk with people where we can find them. I live in Utah and the vast majority of people in Utah are either Latter-day Saints or are influenced by Mormonism. And so, that's just what we tend to focus on, but it's not like we only think that the Latter-day Saints need the gospel. We'll talk with anyone who comes by. Just last week, we were at the Hare Krishna Festival down in Spanish Fork, Utah. And out there wasn't just LDS individuals, but it was other individuals as well that were at a concentrated location in which I could speak to them about the gospel and get the gospel out. So all people need the gospel who don't know Jesus Christ. And that's why we're out here. Why pick on Mormons specifically? Um, well, I actually do kind of pick on other groups a little bit in a sense. Not in the sense that I'm actually picking on them, but um, I do engage a lot of Jehovah Witnesses uh, up in Cache Valley. Um, and uh, I don't necessarily run into a lot of uh, Muslims. Um, I do run into people sometimes who confess Buddhism, um, but just because of the, where we are geographically, um, just the majority of our, the population here is LDS. I've talked with some people who just assume that everyone who would come out here on the street does it for money. Uh, that's not true. No one that I know of makes any money specifically by coming down to General Conference. How much money do you make for being out here? Negative money. <laughs> um, I mean, we got to pay for the gas to come out. Nobody's sponsoring us. Uh, uh, yeah, we don't get paid at all. We do this of our own free volition. Um, I make uh, negative money because it costs me money to get here. Um, I would pay money to come 
share the good news with people. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely don't make any, any money. I have no uh, monetary uh, incentive to, to be here. <laughs> No. Because <laughs> when people look at me, they see money. This is a guy who was loaded. The answer is nothing. Just, I want to make that abundantly clear. Here's what we want to talk about. We want to talk about who God is. We want to talk about who Christ is. And we want to end up talking about what the gospel is. If all we do is come out here and say, hey, Mormonism is false, the religion that gives you peace and comfort through the trials of your life isn't true, have a nice day. That doesn't accomplish anything for the gospel. What we want to do is get to who is Jesus, what has he done, what is the work that he's done for us and is doing, and how do we know that, which is the, the scripture issue. If we don't get to that, then, then what else, what are we doing here? The three things I love to talk about when people who stop and talk to me is who God is, who Christ is, and what the gospel is. Um, because those are the three foundational things that really just um, people need to get right. Um, and that's what, uh, unfortunately, a lot of LDS people have wrong. The main thing I'd really like to engage in conversation with is who is Jesus? Um, we. If, if you have a, a very short conversation with a Christian and a, and a LDS person and you were to observe it, if that was a one minute, 30 second, maybe even five minute conversation, you would think, oh, these two people agree on everything. But that's not true. That's not true at all, actually, because the Jesus of the Bible created everything. Nothing came into being that did not come into being through him. The Jesus of Joseph Smith is not that Jesus. He's a created being, kind of like the Jehovah Witnesses believe, who's a brother of Satan. That's a different Jesus. That's not a Jesus that can save you. Like I say, I think for, for, for this particular group of people, Jesus is enough. That's the message I want to lay across, that he died for us, he, he paid that debt for us so we don't have to, and our works will never be good enough, but he is. My motivation is to tell Latter-day Saints that there is an ability to get forgiven, but it's not through keeping the commandments of God continually, as Doctrine and Covenants 2515 says, but rather it's through having a relationship with Jesus, that Jesus has the ability to impute His righteousness into our account through faith and faith alone. Spurgeon wrote this, If sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our dead bodies. And if they perish, let them perish with our arms wrapped around their knees, imploring them to stay. If hell must be filled, let it be filled in the teeth of our exertions, and let not one go unwarned and unprayed for. And I think that that articulates well the kind of urgency that we have. We don't talk with people because we hate them. We don't talk with people because we're just grumpy. We talk with people because it's our duty to help communicate the hope of the gospel to them. Well, I just want them to know that there are not very many of us compared to the 20,000 people that come to each session of, of conference, but that we each one of us has a desire to share our faith in a loving way. And I hope they don't take what we're doing as arrogant or mean-spirited or quote-unquote anti-Mormon. That's not the case. We care so much. If Mormonism is true, we all ought to become Latter-day Saints. If it's not true, then we need to find out what is. And we want to explain what the Bible teaches. And I think that's fair. In just a few moments, conference is going to let out and there are going to be tens of thousands of people streaming by this very spot. And let me encourage you, if you are ever here at General Conference and you just think we're out here to pick a fight, uh, please stop and talk with one of us. Uh, even if you end up disagreeing with us, these are topics that matter for eternity. And so uh, I, I urge you, stop and talk with one of the protesters who are out here. Hear what we have to say. Uh, hear where we're, argue, where we're coming from. Here are the, the verses that we use from the Bible in support of our positions. And perhaps maybe even be challenged in some of what you thought about us and about what you currently believe.
Thank you.